Hello everybody and welcome back to another Marvel Crisis Protocol Tournament Recap. So it's been a little minute since we since we did one of these and um, that's partially just because the tournament scene kind of quieted down a little bit over the holidays and stuff like that. And then last week we were supposed to go to our, our first one of the year but unfortunately due to the weather we had to cancel so we didn't end up going to it. But this weekend we finally were able to get one through and it was at our local scene so that's always great. Obviously, weather can't really stop us if it's, you know, five minutes from our house. So that was pretty good. But um, yeah, so Reed and I both played in this. And, and if you watch any of the other types of videos on the channel, you'll probably know Reed. He's uh, he's in most of the battle reports on the channel. So yeah, um, I guess we'll go ahead and get right into things. So yeah, going, going over real quick who was all here. Uh, so obviously... Rita and myself, and spoiler alert, this is in the placings, so I'm pretty happy with how I did. I went 3-1, and one. I stole second place here. Reed did first place here, going 4-0, and oh, so pretty good on his part. Uh, congratulations to him there, and then we'll talk about that a little bit here as well. But um, yeah, and then a lot of familiar names, if you've been watching any of these videos in the past, you'll recognize a lot of these names, they show up in a lot of the previous ones, but lots of really, really good players, this was a great scene. And um, yeah, we're just going to kind of go into it. So first things first, as I always do, for anyone curious, here is the winning roster. Um, so if you need to pause or anything like that, go ahead and take a look there. But yeah, it's basically X-Men with, with Ultron, because Ultron is really, really good. So that's what Reed has been running lately. So before we get into the games, I figure I should probably unpack my list very quick, because it is a little different. I was going for a little bit more of a kind of challenge mode here so i'm actually very very happy with the the three and one that i was able to get considering this challenge because i was bringing a model that generally people kind of consider a little far below the curve and i was making myself bring it every single game so that model is of course hulk buster um but yeah so we'll, we'll run through the list real quick of course i also brought steve and sam as my leaders steve rogers one i've played around with three a little bit and really just doesn't work super well for me and I figured, especially if I was forcing myself to bring Hulkbuster every game, I wanted to have something that I was a little more comfortable with as the leader. And of course, I wasn't trying to run Hulkbuster leadership because, well, it's not the greatest. Let's let's be real about that. So I was running Steve and Sam as my backup leaders. I think they're both pretty good with Hulkbuster. Um, he really appreciates condition removal and, and healing and, and free movement off of Sam. So kind of everything Sam can give him. Uh, and then with Steve Rogers, he gets hit and run online turn one. He can do a lot of stupid things with that. So so that's a lot of fun as well. So yeah, I, I figured that would be kind of a good way to to boost the the kind of challenge I was giving myself and make up for it as best as I can is just by making sure I have good, consistent leaders with him. So I guess I should also mention why I was bringing the Hulkbuster. As you may be able to see from the thumbnail, unfortunately... Um, I, I, that's just going to be a thumbnail image, so that it's probably not the biggest, but I'm sure I'll get him in a battle report at some point. Um, I recently got a second Hulkbuster, uh, long story, but I ended up with a second one, and there's this image circulating in the internet for a while of basically R2-D2 fused with Hulkbuster. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, actually, I'm going to see if I can pull it up. All right, so this isn't the greatest picture of it. It's super blurry, but this is the image that kind of inspired it. So it's basically just been a recolored Hulkbuster. I think this is the shot from the movie, uh, Age of Ultron, of course. And then it's got R2-D2's head on it. Now, while I didn't do that part for mine, I did paint it kind of in the R2-D2 scheme. And I thought it was really cool. And I even did the pop-out suit as C-3PO. So I got a picture of that uh, here, if I can go ahead and bring that up. Um, so that is, that is what my version of, um, the, the R2 looked like, and I was pretty happy with it. It's not the best paint job in the world, it definitely could have been cleaner, but I thought it was cool, I thought it was fun, and I was like, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and, and do that. So, went ahead and basically was like, yep, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna run exclusively, uh, Hulkbuster today and, and see how that goes for us. And it went pretty well, as you can see by the uh, by the tournament here. So, um, yeah, so that was the kind of idea. And then going into the rest of the list, I just kind of wanted to bring stuff that was generally good with either or both of these leaders. Um, and stuff that wouldn't, you know, get in the way of Hulkbuster too much. I wanted to keep kind of the general idea of the stuff I like to do with Hulk. 
where I'm going to have, you know, bodyguards and stuff like that. So Luke Cage was pretty much an auto-include. Um, I wanted to do Hulk because I, I was kind of playing around with the idea of, you know, I'm, I'm already kind of doing a meme thing, so why not do Double H once in a while? And if the scenario is right for it, I actually don't think it's all that bad. So I, I add Double H, uh, and I actually did run it a couple times, and, and we'll talk about that. But yeah, so I, I brought Hulk and Hulkbuster. Uh, I brought Black Panther just because he's really, really good. Uh, he's great under both Sam or Steve, so... Uh, he was in the list because, yeah, very solid fourth threat and just, just a great model. Uh, and then we have Black Widow, two threat of choice. Uh, just being affiliated kind of makes it the, the easy include for two threats. Uh, I haven't really decided if there's a two threat I would prefer more in Avengers, but Widow did fine today. Uh, she disappointed me in some places. She did really well in others. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. She, she might be something that I play around with in my main list because I still don't really know what I'm doing for the two threat in my main version of this list. We brought Crimson Dynamo because he's also just generically a very, very good model and kind of sticks with that idea of just keeping my stuff alive. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't actually end up running Crimson Dynamo today, and for that matter, I don't think I ran Black Panther either today. Um, I just was having a hard time finding space for four threats. Um, locking myself to a six threat uh, definitely kind of restricted my, my list building ability, so that was something that, that unfortunately neither of them really hit the table, but they were there because they're good. Another model that didn't hit the table was Zemo. Uh, I've th been thinking about playing around with Zemo under Steve 1 and maybe Sam for a little bit now, and unfortunately I didn't get to try it out today, but I'm going to try him again in the future and see how that goes. Lastly, we have Gwen. Um, Gwen's just a really good model. She can be totally obnoxious, and I'm trying to get better with her because she's a super high skill ceiling model, and yeah, um, I played her in one or two games today, I think two. And yeah, she did she did pretty solid, so I'm definitely gonna keep playing around with her. Of course, her biggest issue is she is super squishy, and um I still try to figure out how best to play around that, and, and we'll talk about that as well. For tactics cards, I kept it pretty simple. Um uh, most of the cards are just cards that I kind of use in my regular Avengers list. So Avengers Assemble obviously being an auto-include, uh Heroes for Hire auto-include with, with Luke Cage. I brought in Second Wind because in some of my practice games, um, Hulkbuster got stunned early on and it felt really, really bad. So I had Second Wind there just in case, but I didn't end actually end up bringing it in any of my games. Did consider it a couple times, but I've kind of gotten into this weird system with, with this list where I kind of picked the exact same five tactics cards every single game. It was kind of weird and I don't know how I feel about it. I don't hate it. It makes the choice really easy, but... It just kind of ended up being that way, and most games I used all five, so I don't think it was the wrong choice either. <laughs> um, and those cards were uh, Helios, um, Heroes for Hire, Indomitable, and Brace, uh, and then Avengers Assemble. And there's not much point in really talking about the other cards on this list, because I brought those five cards every single game today. Um, so if you can tell, other model that got brought every single game was Luke Cage. So Luke Cage and Hulkbuster were in every game, because... I think Luke Cage is almost an auto-include for me, at least. Like, it's it's really hard for me to want to play Avengers without Luke Cage. He just does so much work, and we'll talk about how stupid he was today. But, um, yeah, so for scenarios, I really wanted to try and take advantage of the, the guaranteed pushes on Hulkbuster. Um, you know, I already, with my regular Avengers list, kind of play a more, like, bricky, I'm going to sit on, sit on these, like, few secure points, I'm going to make sure I'm scoring them and you're not. And that's kind of, you know, we're going to draw this out to round six, but by the end of it, I will have more points than you. And uh, I kind of kept the same idea here. I didn't I didn't want to go too, too crazy with anything else. So Gamma and Intrusions uh, were, were kind of my main crises for Secures. And then I did have Scoundrels, and the logic behind Scoundrels is just, it allows me to kind of do, you know, a bit of a Sam Spam-ish thing. With Hulkbuster, it's a little less on the spam, but 1-6 you can kind of get away with as long as you're doing mostly, you know, 3s and a 2 and stuff like that. In addition, I just like Scoundrels with the with the Captain Americas, because the shield throws are ignoring cover, and that's pretty nice. So, yeah, I, I stand by that decision. Didn't actually end up coming up today, but I, I do think it's an okay scenario for them at least, but probably the least, least uh, effective of the ones here just considering the fact that I was forcing myself to run Hulkbuster. Uh, then we go into the uh, extracts, and hey, we have another secure. We have Research Station, which is basically the, the same idea as uh, the, the kind of main secures there. You know, it's one point, I can push my opponents off of it and just hold it. 
Uh, and then the other ones, I just wanted relatively low scoring things. So Montessi and Legacy Virus, because I didn't, as you can see, I don't have very many things in the way of like steals or anything like that. So I didn't want my opponent to be able to get a huge lead on Extracts alone if I could avoid it. So going into the games, uh, it was a four round event. And uh, as, as obviously spoiled by the beginning, I did go three and one. So these were my games here. I played against Eric R, who I've played against many times in the past, and uh, the, those have all been captured in tournament recaps, or at least many of them have been, uh, probably not all. Uh, then I played against Dutch round two, and um, I played against him in, actually I think every game against him was in a tournament recap, so, so he's another person I've played against many, many times. Reen was my round three. He's one of my locals. Really good game there as well, and and great player. Um, we'll talk about the games because they were actually really really swingy. All three of the first games, um, they were they were pretty wildly dicey, and and we'll talk about that. But then my final game was against Reed, and if you can see the score, uh, it's eleven to ten, and the end of it, he won by one point. End of round six, and we'll talk about it because it was a really really good game. But yeah, so I guess we're going to kind of go through these one by one, starting out with Eric here. So for my game into Eric, we were playing Legacy Virus and Demons Downtown. So this is kind of the sort of thing I was going for, relatively low scoring. It's going to be kind of a battle of, you know, just trying to control the few points on the board. We got 19 points, but of course he was playing Black Order. So I have to be mindful that this is going to end up mostly being an attrition game. So I really wanted to play into that. So for 19th threat, I mean, first of all, I'll go ahead and show his list off here. Now, what is really weird that keeps happening between Eric and I every game we play against each other, we always seem to get 19th threat. And this was the first time that it was 19th threat and it wasn't uh, intrusions because it's almost always intrusions for some reason. This time it wasn't, this time it was demons, and that scared me a lot, because being on fire against Black Order is terrifying. But um, he brought the same list that he's brought, with, brought against me many, many times now, because we always play the same threat. And of course, I couldn't bring the same list this time, because Hulkbuster usually isn't a part of it, and I cut Rhino from my main list a while ago, and that's what I usually bring against him, so... Uh, he brought Thanos, of course, uh, at 8 threat. He runs an interesting set of stones with Thanos. He runs space and time, the logic on time just being it can help him fish for the triggers, and it can help with a little bit of damage consistency here and there, and usually it works to pretty great effect for him. So, um, yeah, at first I definitely questioned it a little bit, but after kind of seeing him play it a few times, I totally get why he does it, and I think it's a pretty decent, pretty decent combination for him. Then, of course, with that, he had Corvus Glaive with the Reality Gem and Proxima Midnight. And then to round out his list, he had Punisher at 3. Uh, I don't remember exactly what cards he brought, but I know he did bring Punisher's uh, Tactics card, which, which allows him to get the extra victory points for KOing my stuff. So essentially, there's one round of the game where his KOs are worth double. Over on my end... Uh, I basically was like, okay, we're playing Black Order, we're playing Demons Downtown... I think this is going to end up being a dice game. I'm playing Hulkbuster. It's round one. I am i wasn't really here to win. I was here to just kind of have fun and play around with big stompy models. So I said, screw it. We're going to go the double H route. So I brought Hulk. I brought Hulkbuster. I brought Steve Rogers for the leader. And I brought Luke Cage for my list. So unfortunately, um, I was I was big dumb and forgot to take pictures of most of my games. I have a couple pictures of the the second game here, uh, which I I will bring those up when we we get to that point. But um, unfortunately, for games one, three, and four. I don't have any pictures of them, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. So I'm not going to spend too much time going on the turn by turn, especially since it's been a little bit and my memory could definitely be better. So I'm just going to kind of talk about some of the general things that went down. And um, basically with this one, so he deployed Proxima off towards the, the left to get the, the left side legacy virus, or my left, his right, of course. Uh, I deployed Luke Cage across because I, I figured Luke Cage can take a hit. If he decides not to go for it right away, I can take the little score up that way. Um, and if not, I'll just move Luke Cage in towards the center to be relevant next turn, because he doesn't really do much turn one anyways, even under Steve, where he can throw. It's not the biggest deal in the world, so I was fine with that. He put Punisher off towards the right. There was a big old size 5 building kind of blocking me from that side, so I just kind of figured, you know what, I'll leave him be a if I can, and I pretty much put everything else right down the middle, and he did the same. Uh, obviously, I was careful not to put 
Hulk or Hulkbuster directly down the middle, because then they would have been lit on fire by the Demon Portal before the game even really started. So we're going into the first couple rounds, and, or the first couple turns, and he goes and he picks up his, his hammer with, with Proxima, or not hammer, Legacy Virus with Proxima. And so I just basically was like, okay, well, if, if that's what we're doing, um, I had Cage actually double move to the, to the middle of the board uh, and pick up the, the middle one. Um, because I, I knew I couldn't let him get all three. Having Going up against Black Order and giving them a point lead just feels really wrong. And I was kind of doing that anyways, but I, I wanted to at least, you know, somewhat be able to keep up here. So I double move Luke Cage to the middle. And I know this is risky because I know he still has Thanos and he still has Corvus. But at the end of the day, I kind of have to give him something. So I do. I put I put Luke Cage up front and he grabs one and he's sitting as safe as he can be on the on the middle point. Um, and then, of course, he, he does end up going, actually, I think he went Punisher first, forced me to kind of just place Cap in a position, so Cap kind of just moved up and, and hung out by, a, uh, by the, my back demon portal, I think. Maybe he went up to the middle, I'm not 100% sure, actually. But either way, he didn't do anything of super meaning. I think I, I contemplated trying to get a shield throw over to Punisher, but I, I believe I ended up going against it. And, um, yeah, so I just had him contesting one of the points, probably my back one. Then for, um, then he went with Thanos, and, and he pulled in Luke Cage, and he has face stoned himself up, and, um, in the opposite order, because that's, that's how this works. <laughs> um, but then he was able to punch Cage, so, so he punches Cage, and he gets a really, really good attack roll. He does four damage to Luke Cage, and then, th uh, he gets the throw trigger, but he elects not to use it because in order to throw me into anything, he would have been throwing me out of his melee range to punch me again. So he goes for the second punch, and thankfully on this one, he doesn't roll quite as well. He only gets one damage, and he does get the throw trigger. So he goes to throw me into a car, which is out of his reach, and I actually elect to brace it. Because at this point, Cage is holding an objective, and I kind of have a plan for what I want to do this turn anyways. So... Cage hits the car, braces it, I burn brace, but his only throw is Thanos, so I'm not too, too concerned about taking too many more big ones throughout the rest of the game, and I do have Indomitable if I need it, so after this, I go for the Avengers Assemble, I move Hulk and Hulkbuster up with that, and I use it to bring Luke Cage back to relative safety on the back end of the point again, which is really good, because now it means if Corvus wants to get to him, Corvus is going to have to actually move. He can't just mothership to Thanos and punch uh, Cage. So hopefully I've protected the point here. And then having um, having advanced both of my models up here, uh, I elect to go with Hulk first, and I basically just have Hulk move and Gamma Leap. And he's essentially on... Actually, I think he did get to the back Gamma Shelter for... Um, or not Gamma Shelter... Um, demon portal. He got to the back demon portal, but he was also within range two of Thanos, who very notably wasn't on the portal. He didn't want to light any of his guys on fire, which kind of understandable, especially since he was scoring up on the alien cores anyways. So he had Thanos there, and Hulk took a big old swing, and unfortunately didn't grab any damage there. But then he motherships in Corvus, and uh, I think he just maybe put like four or five damage on, on Hulk with a double tap, so... You know, that's not too, too bad. I, I think it was something around four or five damage. I don't know the exact numbers, but it wasn't enough that I was particularly worried for, for Hulk's life, but it wasn't nothing either. I know that much. Then I had Hulkbuster come up, and he pretty much landed himself in the same spot. Um, he, he was able to, I think he had to move, and then he blasted, and I think I just kind of pushed either Thanos, probably Thanos, um because I don't think I was trying to put too much on Corvus at this point. I pushed one of them back a little bit, and... Oh no, this is what I did. I, um... Because it was Steve Rogers, um, so Hulkbuster still had one power, because he starts the round with two. Um, so after Avengers Assemble, he still had one. And basically all I did was I, I moved him within range three of uh, Punisher, and I hit and ran off Punisher to go contest uh or not contest but be kind of around his back point so i would be in the fight with thanos and, and corvus um but i also did two damage to punisher and pushed him to the point where if he wanted to be relevant at all for the rest of the game he was gonna have to at least waste one move action and yeah that was that was pretty good i, I was pretty happy with that turn and then we got into the next round he had prio and he really just wanted to start wailing on my models but 
Um, one of the things that I was kind of hoping was going to happen, and it did kind of work out for me this way, was that having the two beefy boys up at the front, he was going to be kind of forced to, to figure out which one he wanted to hit, and there was going to be situations where I was going to be able to force him to kind of not, not necessarily not have a choice, but if he wants to double tap, he has to target the one that he's already in range of, of course. So I was trying to play around with, with all of the control that this list had between Hulk having throws and pushes and Hulkbuster having pushes on, on both of his attacks and throws on, on his fender. I was trying to play around a lot with kind of controlling where his models were and who they were allowed to attack. And I'm not going to go too into specifics on, on round by round. I wanted to talk about round one because it was the Avengers Assemble. But um, basically, uh, that was kind of the game that I played. Was I, I kept everything pushed back as often as I could. Uh, so he was being forced to waste a lot of move actions to get to me. And I was just kind of trying to whittle down and, and win the Attrition War partially just by, you know, throwing a lot of dice at him and, and hoping he couldn't throw as many back. But also just by things like moving moving Luke Cage and, and Captain America into positions where they were going to be able to bodyguard as often as possible. And then also just getting as many pushes as I could. Um, Thanos was hanging out in a corner of the board multiple times. Corvus got sent very far away at one point. And um, basically what it ended up coming down to... Um, you know, the game kind of, I, I just kind of played that, that continued stall tactic out for most of the game. Uh, Luke Cage went down very, very quickly, but, uh, I was able to keep Hulk alive well past when he should have died. Um, between stuff like Cage being able to, to heroes for hire and Steve just being there. And then a couple really like lucky, uh, roles that went my way. So Hulk ends up basically dummying Proxima out of the game pretty handily. He dummies Punisher out of the game. I flipped Corvus through, or I threw Corvus away and flipped him. So I'm in a great position. Uh, and Thanos had been sent to the middle of nowhere by Hulkbuster. And then we go into the into the final round. And at this point, he needs to drop like two or three of my models if he wants to win the game. Um, I still have Steve left, but he's uh, he's been flipped. Hulk is on like two health and Hulkbuster is... Uh, about half, I would say, but they're both pretty far away because I've sent Thanos and Corvus to the middle of nowhere, and um, I've dropped the final um, Legacy Virus kind of near near my guys, but not near enough that it's like super convenient for him to be able to punch me and pick it up. So the the big thing about this is because Hulk had been going around and dazing all of these models, he had two of the viruses on him. So he was scoring me two points per turn. He was on like two health, but he was also hitting like an absolute truck because he was on like two health. Um, so basically he ends up having to make the decision to go, uh, he double moves with Thanos just to pick up the the last legacy virus. And then we kind of just, I, I kind of just look at the board and I'm like, well, and going into the, the final round, Thanos has a virus, but also Thanos is your, Thanos and Corvus are your only models that can deal damage. Corvus just woke up. Um, I still have Helios laser online, so I threw, I want to say, 18 or 20 dice at Corvus. I really went overkill on it because I didn't want it to fail, and as would be expected, that did succeed. I, I took Corvus off the board, and at this point, Thanos really didn't have anything he could do. Um, he moved forward, he tried to do a, a blast on Hulk. Uh, I think he failed to do the damage he needed, and at that point, it was basically game. I had Hulk get over to... Uh, Thanos, he punched him down, uh, because he was already at, like, half health. That didn't kill him, that, that would have flipped him, but he dropped the final, final legacy virus, Hulk picked it up, and I scored a bunch of points in the final round, because at that point I just double moved everyone to, to be standing on, on the different, um, flaming portals, and, uh, Hulk died to legacy virus, which was, which was a kind of cool little thing there, so, I mean, eventually I guess he took him down, but, um full honesty it was super dicey the first couple rounds were really heavily in his favor he got the first like 10 or 15 damage on hulk really really quickly but then after that he just couldn't finish anything on hulk he was taking out luke cage and, and doing a lot of damage to steve really really effectively but he couldn't and anytime he actually got to make an attack on hulk it just fell flat meanwhile hulk's turning around and he's one-shotting proxima on full health and he's one-shotting um not corvus but um Punisher on full health so there was a lot of dice going on there and yeah I mean that's kind of what we were expecting I did double H into into Black Order so 
it was a super dicey game, but it was a fun one nonetheless. So going into round two, I was paired up against Dutch, and I've played against him many, many times. He's also a quite, quite a good player. And uh, we got we got Infinity Formula and Research Station. So part of this I was really happy about, the other part of it I was kind of neutral on. But um, yeah, we'll go ahead real quick and we'll just take a look at what his list was here. So he was running kind of an X-Force Hydra cross list here. And Hydra was really just for a specific scenario. Um, it was the Marifist Witnesses. And um, he didn't unfortunately get to run that at all today, but he ran X-Force against me, and part of the idea behind his list was Red Skull Master of Hydra with X-Force rerolls is very, very consistent. So that was that was the main idea, is just kind of try to try to push that consistency as much as he can and just do a bunch of damage. And this is the one that I actually have pictures of, so we'll be able to go over those. So I didn't take pictures at every round like I should have. This was actually the end of round two, not the end of round... Or, yeah, this is the end of round two, I think. Um... No, sorry, this is the end of round one. Um, so I deployed, as you can kind of see, I had Hulkbuster and Cage down the middle. I had Gwen off to the right, and I had Sam and Widow on the left. I elected for Sam here just because it was a little bit wider of a scenario. There was going to be five points to score on the board total, and or I guess seven if you count Researcher as two. And I figured the extra mobility off of Sam would be really, really helpful here. And I think I chose correctly. Um, Sam himself is also just a very good model. Now, very importantly, um, it, it was a little mitigated by the fact that he did have Logan, who who can't be pushed being a size 2, or uh, by, by size 2 pushes being a size 3. We also uh, messed up the ruling a little bit because apparently X-23's adamantium skeleton rule is slightly different. Um, she only counts as size 3 for the purposes of throws, not pushes, so I actually would have been able to push her with Spider-Gwen, um, but whoops, didn't happen um and we just kind of went with it and i ended up winning anyways so not really a big deal but um yeah that was basically kind of the opening gambits here was uh he used cat and mouse to to put wolverine on this point so he would have an extra power so he'd be able to charge out the gate and he did have no matter the cost so i had to play around that turn one and once again i ended up burning avengers assemble round one um, basically what I did was I had Hulkbuster do his thing. He blasted the Hydra grunts. Um, I had enough models that I was kind of able to force him to go before me because he didn't do the cat and mouse on cable. I had Widow go first, you know, and hide back here and, and basically just force him to make a lot of kind of subpar activations before my activations. I saved Gwen for very last because Logan was on this side and I wanted to make sure he had nothing he could get to with him. So what I basically did over here was... Uh, you know, I had Luke Cage ended up double moving to be just barely within range one of the of the middle objective, pretty much exactly where he is right now. Actually, probably exactly where he is right now, which was just a tiny bit out of Logan being able to get to him. Um, you obviously don't have the range ruler on the table here, but it was like maybe a centimeter out of range three. Um, so it was pretty close and um, he was just barely on the point. For Hulkbuster, because I knew if Hulkbuster was standing on the point, he would have been able to to charge into me and, and, and do some nasty things. I didn't want to let him do that, so basically what I did was I, I moved up, and I paid two power for the hit and run, and I blasted the, the Hydra Grunts. Um, there was a debate between, between whether I should blast Red Skull or the Grunts, but I figured the Grunts was more worthwhile, because I didn't want to power up Red Skull too early if I didn't have to. I used the hit and run, and I just kind of planted myself somewhere around Luke Cage here. I was a little bit further back. And then eventually, um, what ended up happening was, oh, I think I also might have had Sam, like, try to plink some damage on, or, or pushes on, um, either Red Skull 2 or, or, um, Cable, but as you can see, nothing's moved here. I think it was Cable, so it didn't end up mattering, but, um, then he was eventually forced to, to go with Wolverine. He wasn't able to get in range, as, as you see, he, he tried to do it, and... Because of Cat and Mouse, he's not allowed to do more than one move action, so he was kind of just stuck in the middle there. And then my final activation, I went with Gwen. I impact webbing on X-23. Didn't get the... Or I might have gotten the push, I don't remember, but it doesn't matter because we didn't think I was able to. So I, I web pulled her just off of her point there, which this was actually a bit of a misplay on my part. I pulled her into range 3 of Gwen, and in the next round, I would be punished for that. But for this round, I then just played Avengers Assemble. I had Sam walk back over to this Infinity Formula so he would get the, the extra power. And I had Hulkbuster 
uh, just go chill on the middle here, and yeah, uh, that, that scored me in the middle, so I was able to score up starting round one. So this was the end of round two, and trying to remember exactly what happened here, a few notable things. So in this round, Cable uh, one-shot Sam on the on the portal, which was, or on the Infinity Formula, which was a little unfortunate, but is what it is. Uh, he finally brought Logan in. You can't see him, but he is still on the table. Luke Cage is just kind of hiding under Hulk, Hulkbuster's arm here. Um, I don't think I heroes for hired this. I think I actually walked him over there. Um, and I probably just punched someone. I don't think it did anything super meaningful. But um, point being kind of I still had two models on, on this middle point here. He might have actually dazed Cage this round. I'm not 100% sure because I'm just looking at the score on the side here. And my Avengers token is only on the 5 which would have been close to what I scored the first round. So I think he tied me here. He must have dazed Cage, and, and obviously Wolverine was still alive. Um, Red Skull, I think, probably contributed to that. And um, Hulkbuster was basically just trying to push things away, but I think he ended up having final activation, kind of, and um, Wolverine was able to land on the point. Um, like I said, Cable took out um, Captain, Captain America, uh, Widow just kind of moved forward, I think took a took a pot shot at Cable, maybe did one damage, I don't remember exactly. And then over here, I got punished really hard, uh, like I mentioned was going to happen. X-23 did a range 3, um, you know, I don't think she got me in 1, I think she got relatively close, uh, but then, you know, was able to, to move in, finish the job, land on my point using Frenzy, and then what I basically did with Hulkbuster was I... I don't remember how I got over there. I think I actually used the leadership trigger to move Hulkbuster this way, blasted X-23 to be off of the point, so even though I wasn't scoring it, he wouldn't score it either, uh, and I did that as a hit and run so I could come back, and then I think I blasted the grunts after that, which is why they're back there, but um, he kind of slowed down my scoring here, but he also only scored one point this round, so it wasn't that bad for me at the end of the day, and then going into kind of the end of the game, uh, obviously a lot has been skipped here because I missed uh, I missed two rounds, it looks like. Um, but basically what ended up happening between this is um, there was a really important turn. So Sam was flipped, and, and I basically ended up kind of running Sam down here and just kind of playing, you know, shields in range of Heroes for Hire on Luke Cage. He ends up trying to bring X-23 more towards the, the middle here as I send Gwen kind of towards the back right here to a little bit more safety, but still enough that she could kind of move, pull someone and move back. Uh, and of course she's scoring me one point per turn. So the plan with Gwen was basically just to keep her up there scoring me one point per turn for the rest of the game. Um, meanwhile, yeah, Sam and Cage were going to kind of just skirmish down here. Um, Cage was rolling absolutely insane with, uh, with his builders today. So he ends up punching Logan, getting the stagger on him. And then I do a spender on him as well. And I get the throw, and I end up, because I, I had Cage, like, down here at this point. I, I don't remember exactly how I got down there. It might have been a Heroes for Hire. But I got the throw, and I end up sending Logan around here-ish. And um, Logan is um, staggered, slowed, and stunned at this point. Really importantly, also, uh, Logan was on one health here, staggered, slowed, and stunned. Um, and that was relevant because what he ends up doing with Cable this round is he actually throws probably this piece of terrain, but I don't remember exactly what, um, at his own Wolverine, uh, so he's not, he's A, not an easy days for me next round, and B, the stagger would go away that way. Um, so that was an interesting choice because, um, it does put him on his flip side where he's a, he's a very different type of model, but he did still have, I believe at this point, exceptional online. Um, in a similar vein, I also, at some point, managed to throw... Did I get the stagger with Cage twice in this game? It's actually very possible that I did. Because I think I got that on Red Skull as well. I'm going to have to think about this one for a second. So yeah, actually, thinking about it more, um, I think I got the stagger off of Luke Cage twice this game. I'm pretty sure the round before, not this round, although maybe I can actually check um yeah cosmic invigoration hadn't been popped yet so it must have been this round maybe it was the next round that i did it to logan um but basically i got the triple combo on red skull as well at some point this game and he was able to use cosmic obliteration to get around that which was which was good on his part um but uh and that's also actually how hulkbuster got lit on fire it was uh wasn't cable so maybe that was the round before then um, because I think I had the fire on me. Nope, I didn't have the fire. So that's when that's when this happened. Um, but yeah, so 
Then the round after this, I did it to Wolverine as well. And can I just say, Cage was absurd with this trigger. Uh, I'm pretty sure Cage threw about eight or nine builder attacks this game, and I'm pretty sure I hit six staggers, which is absolutely insane. That is not statistical at all, but I'll take it, I guess. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he used the Cosmic Obliteration to get around it there, and then when I threw Logan over here, he threw a piece of terrain at him so he would kill his own Logan to uh, make sure he wasn't as easy of a target for me in the next round, which was smart on his part. Um, I was expecting it to go into Hulkbuster at the time, actually, because what he ends up doing is he um, he body slides over and he brings Cable about here and just starts unloading into Hulkbuster, trying to take him down. Luckily for me, Hulkbuster was doing really well at bulking, and he ends up staying alive for this. Uh, and then we go into the next round, and I'm basically like, okay, well... I need to do big things here. Uh, he was getting ready to kill my leader. I think Luke Cage at this point was off the board. And so I just have Widow, Gwen, and and Hulkbuster left. And Hulkbuster is not long for this world. So I was like, you know what? If we can if we can kill 11 threats, somewhere in this mixture, I, I did finish off uh, Red Skull on his front side. Uh, it was a lot of chip damage, kind of just slowly wearing him down, if I remember correctly. Uh, whereas Cable on his front side... Um, I'm pretty sure I spiked like a, a meteor punch or something into and, and just took him down like that. So that was good for me. Um, but then they're both here, they're both injured, but they're both at full health. So I basically am like, okay, well, we're going to go with Hulkbuster and we're going to Helios laser. And I think I threw 20 dice at Cable. So I take Cable off the board. I basically melted him. And then I, that got the splash damage onto Red Skull. And I, I was looking at Red Skull. I'm like, you know what? The, the odds actually aren't that bad here. Uh, I think I needed four damage and then the throw would have finished the job because he was keeping him in energy mode, which was smart because I was throwing six dice energy most of the time with Hulkbuster. So I go for the Meteor Punch, uh, which is eight dice physical with a chance to throw. It's a little bit in his favor, but I was hoping for, you know, even just the throw would have been better than nothing. Um, so I do end up getting the, the damage I need, though. So Red Skull also goes down, and at this point he just has an injured Wolverine and x23 to to kind of keep keep the fight going and they're both on their injured side uh while i still have widow who i think at this point might have still been healthy she might have taken a shot and went down from cable um and i still have gwen just kind of skirmishing around um you know staying relatively safe and, and being annoying so i'm in a pretty good point at this point i just need to stall at the game and that's basically what ends up happening as as this is the final board state so he does catch up to and kill gwen i think that happens somewhere over here and I was basically like, well, at this point, you can't possibly catch up to me on points. I've got the researcher, you know, away from all of my dudes. So Tony popped out of the Hulkbuster suit. And as you can see, I kind of paid it up C-3PO like. Uh, and we were basically like, okay, Widows ran away to a corner here. Tony, you might be able to kill because he's in the middle, but you're going to actually have to dedicate stuff to that because Tony can be a little obnoxious to kill. So um, we kind of talked it out and we were like, yeah, you're basically not going to catch Widow no matter what you do. So we're just going to go ahead and call game there. We'll, we'll tally up things. Um, Tony actually did end up surviving. We rolled out that part just for the sake of final score. He did end up surviving and he scored me one more point off of the infinity formula before the end of the game. But that was how it ended. I basically just ran away until round six or, or until we got to the point where we could look at the board and say, well... You can keep this up till round six. This is how it ends. And um, yeah, that was that was game two. So going into round three, I was going up against Reen. He's one of my locals, and he's a really, really good player as well. Um, he was bringing his Asgardians list, and that's kind of one of his kind of more main factions. Um, and uh, yeah, we got Hammers and Gamma Waves. So once again, we were asking for a violent game here. And um, we ended up playing 18 Threat. And yeah, I'll see if he uploaded his list. I'm not 100% sure if he did. Uh, and he did. So it's right there if you want to see it. But um, what he ends up bringing against me at 18 is he had Thor, he had Angela, he had Beta Ray Bill, and he had Hela. So that was a little concerning because once again, I kind of saw Asgard. I saw the map we were playing on and I was like, you know what? let's do extreme violence so i went back to my round one list and i was like let's basically do this but slightly different and i'm gonna think about this for a second because i just want to make sure i get exactly what i did right yeah so looking at my own list here um i did hulk hulkbuster luke cage and sam so the only difference from my round one is that i instead of steve i brought sam 
Um, and the reason for that just being there was one threat less, and it was easier to make it work with the points. But also, I don't think Sam is a bad leader under any circumstances, and he's quite good just as a model, so I, I have no regrets there. So this is unfortunately another one where, of course, I don't have pictures because I forgot for every round except the second. But um, it was a it was a really, really dicey game. Um, basically, I did kind of similar thing to what I did in round one, where I used the Avengers Assemble out the gate to be able to get up the board as quickly as possible. But in addition to that, I was able to punish some of his uh, his early things. So uh, I had Pryo, and the first thing I did, uh, Luke Cage was facing off against Beta Ray Bill on the left side over the, the hammer on that side. Whereas Sam and Angela were facing off on the one on the right, and everybody else was just down the middle. So Thor and Hela against Hulk and Hulkbuster. So he goes, or I go ahead with Cage, and I pick up the the hammer on Cage's side because I think Cage can probably take that six dice hit from Beta Ray no problem. And if he does the six dice hit, then it means I'm he's not going to have power to throw or anything like that. So I'm not too worried over there. On the other side of the board, uh, I figured, you know, there was a big size 5 piece of terrain there, and I was kind of like, well, if Angela can get to it, no problem, then she gets to it, no problem. He did have eyes on the prize, but in the world where she has any difficulty, um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna try and use, use Sam to, to punish as much as humanly possible, and um, he does end up needing to use eyes on the prize because of, because of the way the terrain worked, but um, he picks up the thing, and then he just kind of moves back towards his back point. So at this point, I'm looking at the board and I'm kind of like, okay, you know what? I want to make Sam do something, and I'm probably doing this anyways, turn one. So let's just go all violence here. And I played Avengers Assemble with Sam, uh, Hulk, and Hulkbuster. Um, so I basically just moved everyone up, and then Sam did an actual move action, which now put him within the range four of Angela. So I throw a shield at Angela. I did something like three damage, and I got the ricochet, which was freaking nuts. Uh, and then I push her back pretty much to the deployment line, and then I bounce it into Hela, who hasn't even activated yet. I do one damage to her, and I push her past the deployment line small, which is really, really good and freaking insane. Um, not only that, but I'm also doing all of this while standing on my own middle point, if I, if I uh, remember correctly. So Sam more than earning his keep here. Uh, then I think he just moves uh, Hella up and grabs his back hammer because at this point I think he's very aware that I can get to that, that hammer if I want to. Uh, he also uses the leadership to heal Angela I think at this point but the leadership was just kind of being used to, to make his model slightly harder to kill pretty much this entire game. Um, then I go ahead and I go with Hulk and, and uh, I think I started with Hulk and what I do is I basically move him on top of the big piece of terrain we were actually playing the same board that we were playing in the in the previous round um so i move him on the big hydro tank in the middle of the board and i just whip a a size four tank at um at hella uh who if i remember correctly i think he just braced it which yeah makes sense but i was happy to burn brace early in this game because there was going to be a lot of throws going around so I, I was content to, to get that out of the way nice and early. And then I just moved Hulk to go and contest his back point because he could do that. Um, I didn't have the power to gamble leap, unfortunately. I kind of messed that up because I was thinking I was under Steve for a minute and I thought I was actually going to be able to punch Hela, but I wasn't. So that was how we ended it. Um, and then he went with, I think, Beta Ray, just started moving him in. I think he tried to get a shock and failed on, uh, on Hulk. So I was fine with that. And... Um, then I went with Hulkbuster, and Hulkbuster basically just came up. Also went and, I'm not sure if he actually got on or if he just got close to, um, but took a shot at um, at Hela and went generally towards his back point. I think he ended up on the middle point. And um, did, I think, a couple more damage to Hela. I don't think I actually took her down this round, but I had some really good damage on her. And then he finally went with Thor. Thor had to actually move to do anything, and then I think he just swung at Hulk for a couple damage. I don't think it was anything too insane, and he didn't get the trigger, which was what was important for me. So, um, yeah, that round ended very well in my favor, um, not by many points, but just because I kind of had pushed his back point really hard, and uh, it was a nice little little kind of early lead. The game ended up being super attrition-y. Um, you know, he, or I had Pryo next, and I basically said, okay, well, a Hulk, I think I went with Hulk first, and I was just like, Hela is not going to be relevant here, so I immediately dummy her, and I think I might have finished off Angela that activation as well, 
So I deny two activations right out the gate. Beta Ray and Thor's to swing away. Uh, he ends up throwing Hulk at Hulkbuster twice, and I just decide to take it both times. I do have Brace but I, I and Endom, but at this point, I'm kind of okay with taking a little bit of damage because his attacks are whiffing relatively hard, and I can use the power. So uh, Hulkbuster ends up actually blocking everything on the first attack, which was insane. And then the second attack, he takes like two or three damage, which isn't too bad. So um, yeah, I continue with the violence that round. I don't think I actually took down Thor that round. Oh, maybe I did. No, you know what? Actually, hindsight 2020. I think I did take down um, Thor that round, but I didn't take down Beta Ray. I know that for sure. Beta Ray was still healthy. Uh, I might have plinked a couple damage into him. I moved Luke Cage in because at this point Thor was or Hulk was looking kind of low. So I moved Luke Cage in. I just basically double moved him over towards my opponent's back point so I would be able to kind of have that Heroes for Higher Aura and and see what I could do with that. So he goes into the next round and uh, he starts out with Thor and, and he pops the... Um, oh, what's it called? The thing that, that gives him a bunch of extra dice. Uh, this is going to bother me now. i got to think about this. Doom Prophecy. He drops Doom Prophecy, and um, basically now Thor's throwing 10 dice punches, but Thor has zero physical defense. And so he, he throws a 10 dicer, and I actually decide to Heroes for Hire the first one, because if I keep Hulk alive, I'm going to. And um, it not only succeeds, but Cage only takes like 2 damage from it, which was really, really good. He also didn't get the throw trigger here, and what's really important about this is he doesn't get the throw trigger once. Um, he then uh, gets thrown away and just charges back in. I really just wanted to make him spend the power. Um, but he charges back in, and he actually gets to hit Hulk this time because it was a charge. He had the agency to kind of avoid Luke Cage. Um, but Hulk lucks out. Uh, he does maybe one damage to me, I think, and once again doesn't get the trigger. His dice were kind of abysmal for this turn. So then, of course... Um, I think he did get the stagger because of that, so I actually elected not to go with Hulk next. I think I went with Hulkbuster, and I basically said, okay, well, Hela and Angela didn't want to play this game anyways, so I, I dummied Hela, I took her off the table, and then Angela, I, I pushed to the middle of nowhere, and, um, yeah, I think that was pretty much it for there. Uh, I, I, I pushed her as far away as I could with, with Hulkbuster, obviously I only had one action to do that, but she was already kind of out of the way, so sent her even further back. Uh, and then Angela went and she tried to kill Hulk, and she threw her spender at him twice, and she did a total of one damage. Uh, note, at this point, after Angela's turn, Hulk is on two health left, so that's how close he was when I was taking those, those ten dicers from Thor. But um, he's on two health left, and she didn't really end up doing what she needed to do at all. So now I figure, you know what, he's staggered, so it's not the greatest activation in the world, but I will go with Hulk because he does hit harder than anyone else, and he has plus four dice, when, and he had a hammer at this point, so he's plus five dice. So I basically just gamma leap him over towards Hulk or towards Beta Ray, punch Beta Ray. Beta Ray does drop because Beta Ray was already at like half health. So now it's just activation control for me. Uh, and I think what I ended up doing was I had Cage throw a spender on Angela so she would also be slowed and stunned. Uh, didn't quite kill her. I think he might have Odin's Blessing around this point. And um, I think Sam just tried to chip into her as well and, and didn't quite finish the job, or maybe he helped out with another kill somewhere. But I know at this point, um, oh no, what Sam ends up doing here is, no, I didn't kill, I did kill Thor in the Doom Prophecy round. Yeah, so that's what Sam does. Sam actually picks up Beta Ray's hammer that dropped. No, Beta Ray didn't have one. He picks up someone's hammer that dropped. Maybe this was the round that I killed Angela. I could be mixing things up. But he picks up a hammer and he basically just throws five dice physical at a zero defense Thor twice. And that does it because Thor had already taken like one damage from an explosive or something like that. So I needed seven. It was definitely in his favor, but turns out dice were definitely on my side this game. And um, yeah, Thor just kind of died. So all he had left at this point was a beta ray on uh, or a beta ray that was about to wake up and and Angela on like two health slowed and stunned and pushed away from everything so um start of the next round I he finishes off Hulk finally he does get the kill and Beta Ray picks up the hammer so 
I basically just decide to go all in on on Beta Ray. Um, and he actually, sorry, he doesn't finish the kill with Beta Ray. He finishes the kill with Angela. Um, she goes for her um, her attack with the pursuit trigger, uh, like the the long range one. And he whiffs it the first time, and then the second time he just barely gets the the one damage he needed because Hulk was bleeding this entire time. So Hulk actually was now on one health. Um, he gets the one damage he needed and drops the hammer, but I don't think he was able to pick it up. Uh, he, was, he was just out of range of it, or he didn't have power. One of the two. So I end up picking that up. I, I dummy beta ray. I think I dropped Helios laser on him, honestly. Um, so I, I threw like 20 dice at him. I threw a lot of 20 dicers today. <laughs> um, and then I pick up the final hammer, and I basically just scored every point on the board because Angela wasn't contesting anything. So there was no need to kill her and, and, you know, win by table because I could just score a bunch of points and that's easy. So we did that and that was how the game ended. So, yeah, it was it was a fun game for sure. I, I love throwing all the dice out, but um, very, very dicey and there's there's not much more to say about it than that. So here we are. We've reached top table against Reed. And once again, I'll go ahead and throw his list up here for anyone interested um it's it's a pretty solid list i i definitely think it's got a lot of teeth to it but um we got research station and extremis extremis being his research being mine uh he was taking the gamble and unfortunately it didn't pay off for him that uh, we pulled research station but it was a really really tight game and i really wish i'd grab pictures of it because there was there was a lot of stuff going on here so starting out, um, he had Toad kind of over towards the left side, whereas I had Sam and Widow deployed on that side. Um, I had Hulkbuster down the middle uh, facing off against Storm and Ultron. Uh, oh, and I also had Cage here. So, so Cage and Hulkbuster facing off against Storm, Ultron, and Colossus. Um, I knew I was missing one. And then over on the right side, um, he had, I want to say, X-23 facing off against Spider-Gwen. Or ghost spider and um i was relatively confident with the way with the way things deployed i was pretty happy with uh you know he had prio so i knew he was going first so i was going to get the the final say on all of the objectives here which was great and for the most part it went pretty okay for me in the first round i i certainly can't complain about how how, how round one went um not necessarily in this order but he moved colossus up to the middle point uh put him in cover and and just contested the middle point because he knew i was gonna have a really hard time dislodging him and he wasn't wrong um because colossus can't be pushed it's kind of the bane of hulkbuster's existence and sam's for that matter uh, not that sam would be able to push him anyways being size three but he existed there i tried to plank some damage into him as much as i could um i had widow kind of kind of move up and shoot him and then I knew I was going to need the Avengers Assemble round one here if I wanted to actually score the middle, which I definitely did. So uh, I had to be careful not to basically give Ultron too much. And I I needed to be able to get a lot of bodies onto that point. So um, I needed to, I needed a lot of pieces to fall into place for this and it was going to require Assemble. So basically I kind of played with that in mind with everyone on my team. Um... Obviously, the exception being Gwen, because she's not an Avenger, she can't assemble. But um, Sam on the left was able to move after um, words, after Toad, so he was able to move up. I threw a shield at Toad, got a really, really nice hit there. I did something like three damage to Toad on the initial hit, pushed him back, and then bounced it into Colossus, which actually chipped some damage on him as well. Uh, and then he unfortunately did have the power to slippery, and so he, he ended up being on the point at the end of that anyways, but still I was able to, to, once I eventually assembled that turn, end up being on the point. Uh, Widow was contesting my back point, and she took a shot at Colossus, and then on the, on the right side, again, I was able to go after X-23, so basically I just pulled X-23 off of the point and, and sat on it myself, um, with, with Gwen. So that was nice, uh, easy kind of guarantee for, for a point. And then in the middle, uh, Hulkbuster, I think I, I think I blasted Colossus because I wanted to make sure I was putting as much damage into him as possible because once he flipped, I cared about him a lot less. But while he was on his healthy side, he was going to be really, really obnoxious for, for scoring that point and, and just being kind of impossible to, to remove from the table. So... I um 
I had I, I had Hulkbuster just start wailing into him, and I did maybe a couple damage. I don't remember. I don't think I did very much. Um, but then I use the Avengers Assemble, and I have everyone on the point. Luke Cage, I think, just double move to... Or he might have been able to single move and then punch something and then move with Avengers Assemble. I don't remember entirely. But either way, it wouldn't have been a very influential punch. Uh, he did end up getting shot by Ultron, but thankfully it only did like one damage and then gave him the poison, which was a little annoying, but not the end of the world. So it's kind of hard to remember exactly what happens round by round, because this game did go till round six. Um, it was it was in round six when uh, when Reed ended up actually taking the game here. But basically, I was able to score a nice early point lead by grabbing that first researcher, and I was able to hold that at least consistently until the pretty much the very end of the game. Um, but unfortunately, what ended up happening was there was there was a little bit of um, bad luck on the on the left side of the board. Uh, Toad was able to take down Sam. Um, which was really unfortunate for me. So I ended up leaving Toad alive on like one health and then Toad killed Sam, which kind of sucked. But um, then, so he ended up scoring up that point once that, that I wasn't able to. And then I did end up taking down Colossus. Uh, I think the very next round, I, I was able to put a bunch of attacks into him. But uh, Ultron was doing a, a fair bit of work. I was keeping him very power starved because I, I was refusing to punch him under any circumstances. And uh, the grunts I was always able to push away before they blew up, so they weren't hurting any of my guys. So that was pretty nice. I, I was able to kind of mitigate Ultron fairly well in the first few rounds, I think. But uh, with his, uh, I, I forget what it's called. I'm just going to call it Enchilada Beam. <laughs> but with his bow ability, which makes one of my guys advance, um, he was kind of forcing me to kind of time my activations around that because I obviously couldn't give him that point for free. And he would have at least been able to guarantee a tie on it any time that I um, didn't have two models on it. So that the middle was kind of awkward for a little bit. I basically was just trying to brick it out and make sure I at least tie it every round. Um, and for a while that was working really, really well. Um, eventually Cage did go down and um, eventually what was really problematic for me was Hulkbuster went down. And... Um, that that was kind of when the when the tide shifted but over on the right side things were going mostly okay um gwen was kind of on and off the point she did end up getting dazed by x23 at one point which is kind of to be expected gwen is very very squishy um and so i did lose that point once or twice but um gwen was actually kicking around until pretty much the very very end of the game so can't complain there um, she did a lot of work actually because X-23 kept trying to go and contest the middle and, and help out over there and Gwen just kind of kept pulling her back off of it, which was really, really good. But, um, yeah, in the middle, I, I did a really good job for a while at kind of, you know, making sure Ultron was as irrelevant as possible. I dazed Colossus, so I was still scoring the point over him, but once he dazed, uh, Cage for the first time, now suddenly I only had one healthy model there as well. So I ended up actually moving Widow into the fight, and what I did with Widow was basically just kept using the Spender attack on Ultron, and getting that stagger was really, really big. So now not only was Ultron kind of power starved, of course I was doing damage to him now, so I was giving him a little bit of power, but he was also staggered, so he was only getting one activation, and I was trying to kill the Grunts as often as I could, so they would also only get one shot, which was a big deal. Um, but like I said, eventually he did take down Hulkbuster, uh, and that was kind of the turning point, because then he scored the middle point, and like, while I had a point lead that was going relatively well, because he'd been tying the research station most of the turns up to this point, it was only like three or so points, or four points actually, I know the exact number here, <laughs> um, or I guess six points, because... Uh, on the turn that he takes the research station, uh, we're, we're going into the final round now, and he puts the, the researcher, because I brought it back defensively, because I figured it would be easier to protect that way, it would be harder for some of his models to get to it, and I did stand by that decision, that usually works out really well for me, and it meant Storm was completely irrelevant on that point, which was good for me, but unfortunately, I, I did screw it up a little bit. I left it close enough that he could get it within range one of my back point. And this was kind of my, my fatal mistake here, was he put it right on my back point. And then in the final round, all I had left on the board, because once again, um, he'd been able to take down Sam. He actually ends up having X-23 go to finish the job. Um, but X-23, because uh, Sam finally dazed Toad. Uh, um, but X-23 basically got over there 
did a spender on Sam, took him down from almost full health, which was kind of unfortunate, but um, is what it is. She also took down, I think, Luke Cage in the same activation, which was really rough. So I was I was now six threat down. Um, and then um, all I have left at this point is, is uh, Iron Man and... I don't even think I had Gwen anymore. I just had Black Widow. Uh, Gwen ended up being taken down by by Storm, who basically uh, moved in one round and then double tapped me the next. Which, yeah, that makes sense. Gwen doesn't exactly have the best bulk, <laughs> um, so I did end up losing Gwen on the right side. But um, then, kind of, yeah, towards the towards my back point, I had Widow and Iron Man to hold it down, and Widow was was healthy, which was great. Um, well, sorry, was healthy the round before, um, which which was was helping, and she was throwing out staggers and stuff like that, and that was great. And I did still have Helios laser online, so what I ended up doing basically was, in my kind of desperate attempt to to make sure I got this point, was I had Iron Man Helios laser. Um, Colossus so he would be dead because he was already kind of low and I wasn't able to put very much into it because at this point um, I just had the two models left and, and Iron Man pops out with only one power um, but before I did the Helios laser I did a double uh, blast into Ultron which actually finished him off because he had only had two health at this point so that was good I took down Ultron and then I took down um, Colossus with Helios laser but then he was able to move in X-23 and he got the kill on uh, Iron Man in, in a single attack, which was really, really unfortunate because then that also gave him the frenzy and it didn't give me the opportunity to do the um, medium advance away, which would have been a big deal. Um, so he ends up putting an attack into, into Black Widow as well. Widow does survive, but unfortunately Widow isn't able to hit back, so now... The best Widow can do is tie this point, but unfortunately, he still had a dazed Toad, which was able to double move and hop in to take it the back point from him, which, because it was close to the thing, scored him exactly four points, uh, which tied the game, but then Storm just double moves onto one of the side points and scores him his fifth, and that was basically the game right there. So he went from six points up to 11, and I went from 10 to 10 that round, and that was the that was the game. So um to to his credit it wasn't all just kind of x23 popping off and murdering everything in one shot there was good dice on my side as well um notably luke cage got the stagger three times that game uh now admittedly one of them didn't actually matter but um he got it on x23 once uh and he got it on colossus once and then on one of them i think it was x23 i i punched her twice and got the stagger both times, but it didn't matter because I'd already stagger, staggered her with the first. But it was just kind of one of those things adding to the insanity that was Luke Cage today of just getting the stagger almost every single time he made the attack. It was kind of insane. But yeah, that basically sums up the event here. Um, it was a really good event. Lots of great people. Uh, you know, my games were super dicey, so I don't really know how to feel about them from a kind of competitive aspect. Um, you know, I it's kind of hard to analyze games at that level when they come down to so much of it just kind of being we're going to throw a bunch of dice each at each other and mine were really good um in a way i'm kind of actually glad i didn't end up taking the the first place here because it would have been my first kind of legitimate or no if if i had and doing that on an event where i was kind of felt like i was dicing a lot of my opponents didn't feel great so i i'm i'm kind of okay with the fact that i i ended up kind of choking it in the final round there um that that's totally fine by me and at the end of the day considering that i was kind of doing a challenge mode here with forcing myself to bring hulkbuster every single game regardless of scenario um i i don't feel bad about three and one at all i think that's that's a totally fine score to be walking away with so yeah i think uh, i'm pretty proud of how i did here even if I, I think at the end of the day a lot of it was just dice, I don't think I was playing poorly. I think the dice just kind of made it so it didn't matter whether I was playing poorly or not, if that makes any sense. But um, yeah, I was uh, I was pretty happy with it nonetheless. And at the end of the day, it was just great to be in an event again because I was playing with a lot of these people. I mean, a handful of these people were my locals, including two of my games. But um yeah i think uh I'm, I'm really excited to get back into the tournament scene i have another one hopefully next week hopefully no terrible weather again cancels that one so should be another one of these coming out next week 
But um, that is going to do it for this tournament recap. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please do drop a like down below. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. Uh, hopefully next time I remember to take more pictures because I do think that adds a lot to the quality of these battle reports. But um, that is all I have for now. So until next time, everybody, have a great day. Peace.